Hey folks, welcome to Junction City today. I'm Craig Bielik, your host and MC, and I've got my co-host Farrell right here with me, although I'm actually his co-host. But it, Either uh, way, it works. It works like that. Here. Yeah. Oh yeah? We're co-hosts. So if you're the host, then who's our guest? Stuck in the middle. <laughs> our guest, Mark Adams, a relationship expert, professor at Weber State. We've had him on the show before. A um, lot of nice comments about last time he was here Thanks. from Farrell. And, <laughs> and I other don't people. Remember last time he was here. Other sorry. folks like that. Mark is <laughs> here today. We're going to talk about, we're going to do a little something specific today, something close to both Farrell and my heart, and that's aging within ah. your relationship. And because, because you get all married and you're 20 years old and everything, and you know, the moon is full and bright and beautiful and everybody looks good, and then you end up with a husband with a face that looks like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it wasn't that good to start with, but but I, I mean how how common are problems in relationships that are that are caused, a lot of them with the root of aging? So, so uh relationship problems that are specifically connected with the aging. Yeah. Okay. I mean sometimes it uh, might yeah. manifest itself as something else, yeah, but yeah. the root problem is Oh sure. Um well, because aging affects every aspect of who we are in life, I mean, the potential is unlimited. But to give you maybe some specific examples, um, the, <clears throat> the incident of chronic illness, of course, sure. you know, is sure. higher in middle age as it is in younger adulthood. And so sometimes those, those chronic illness-related things can get in the way of the spouse relationship. What I mean is, for some people, it creates this ambiguity, mm -hmm. right? Where, whereas there's this, um, it's hard to, to tell the difference between am I being a spouse right now or am I being a caregiver? Oh. And, you know, that, that uncertainty, that fuzziness, um, then comes with this a feeling of ambivalence. Right. And feeling torn. Opposite emotions at the exact same time. Right. Um, one of the problems with that is that, um, you know, it's not really appropriate to have sex with your patient. Oh, wow. I, so, I didn't think of it that way. So <laughs> Farrell, Farrell all of a sudden woke up, you know. Hey, Farrell. <laughs> I was trying to well, I, well, yeah, I yeah, I was like, get you I involved. I wasn't with you here. So, so expand so, on that for yeah. just a second. I mean, Farrell's yeah, yeah. laughing, but I, I kind of get what you're saying. I do. Well, that, that caregiving relationship often then supplants it, it kind of can take over that marital relationship and the, the romance then doesn't exist yeah. um, that when marriage especially late in later life takes on a caregiving aspect um, that also starts to feel for a lot of people like more of a parent-child kind of relationship where the caregiver is being more parental you know, reminding their spouse oh, to do this, certain things this or doesn't to look good for me at all. <laughs> well, <laughs> Farrell, you have a bad cause, knee. Cause, He's cause, not talking about somebody well, with no, a bad because, knee. Because He's talking my, my, my wife's more like a mom. Yeah. You can't do that. Here, do this. No. Right. Not get over here. Okay. Right. <laughs> so yeah. maybe, maybe. So you're thinking that what well, well, you're worried then is the, is that if something goes wrong, that's going to get even worse. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. When I start losing my my memory and. It's gonna happen. I, you know what? I'm. I've just. I've just come to the realization that I'm gonna have Alzheimer's, and that's all there is to it. Mm. I can't remember anybody's name for longer than five minutes. It's just gonna happen. He doesn't know. For my some name. people, that's. You know, <laughs> they would <laughs> say know my that's name pretty right lucky. <laughs> he doesn't know my name at this at this very moment. But but even you know, I made a joke about it. But even something as as inconsequential, you might say, is a bad knee. Okay, mm -hmm. me and my wife, we like to sure. hike. We like to hike all the time. All of a sudden, I get a bad knee. I can't hike. Right. What happens then? Well, then, then in some ways, she has to decide, am I going to continue this activity that I enjoy without you? Yeah. Or am I going to work with you that we find something else right. to replace it with? Right. You know, uh, depending on how bad your knee is, <laughs> maybe we do a little <laughs> swimming, uh, tennis, or yeah. uh, what's, what's the new thing? Pickleball. Pickleball. Yeah. That or that, right. or, or, that or just get him a little scooter he can go off or on. <laughs> yeah. We can get some. Does Harley make those. scooters? Does Harley make scooters? I want a Harley scooter. 
<laughs> I really do. I want one of those pan tail. That would be cool. Uh, yeah, that would be cool. Our, that would be really cool. So they cool. call them yeah, something like that. Yeah. No, but so so if you're if you're together long enough, or even if you're not together long enough, let's say you get married in your late fifties or something like that, or remarried, there's, right? There's I mean, going to be some that, aging issues. Oh yeah. And and no two people age at the same time the same way, right? Nope. That's absolutely true. In fact, aging itself um, isn't very an accurate term because within the field of aging we talk about the difference between um, chronologic age right how long you've been alive and typically that's what people attach to themselves age. yeah right but then you know fair over here has got a bum knee so we yeah. might say his physical age uh -huh. is older than his <laughs> chronologic age but on the other hand <laughs> You're just making his so psychological better. age is yeah, well, oh, yeah, maturity age is really yeah. low in compared to so, uh, so there's different ways that we can actually talk about age so Craig kind of what you were alluding to mm -hmm. where individuals may age different aspects of age may accelerate for one person or one spouse and not the other okay got it so got you it. were talking about Alzheimer's disease and forgetting, get it forgetting names is not Alzheimer's disease. Um, what if but, you find yourself in a room in your house and you're thinking, why am I standing here? Well, <laughs> that's not the problem. When you start asking yourself, whose house am I in? Oh, right. okay. okay. That's or, the problem. What is this thing I'm in? <laughs> yeah. I'm the, seriously, right, that's the right. problem. Or forgetting how do I get out of this room? Name, forgetting your husband's name is is is. is Forgetfulness, forgetting yeah. that your husband Exists. is not a broom, that's something <laughs> yeah. different. I or mean, that your husband's yeah. not your brother. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, that, you want to mess that up. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> how, common are, uh, how common are issues of aging in the relationship counseling that you do? Well, um, I guess for, it's kind of hard because it's a chicken and egg, right? right? And you got to figure actually, out. Actually, that's it. exactly right. I was just, just going to say, um, a, a lot of my clinical practice that I work with couples um, is mostly middle age. And so when we talk about couples in later life, 65 and older, let's say, yeah. um, by then a lot of people, because of the prevalence and the simplicity of divorce now, couples that make actually make it into later life, yeah. they've got a pretty good foundation already. Oh, okay. You know, a lot of couples who are already struggling, mm -hmm. who have, you know, problematic mm -hmm. ways of dealing with conflict or mm -hmm. you know they, they have uh, whatever the problems might be um, often they've ended their relationship before they get to later life and so in some ways older older couples uh, are at something of an advantage because they have um, more life experience personally but then they often have more life experience within their couple relationship okay so they're they're I call it the weenus, right? The shared identity. Look at now, Farrell is <laughs> yeah. so. Confused. I'm just trying to keep him awake. Farrell is so confused at this <laughs> point am, right yeah, now. He, he's he's like, what are you talking about? Continue. The, I'll now say, yeah. oh, the weenus, like usness, the, the usness, you So the share, oh, so, yeah, yeah, okay. so for you and your wife, how long have you been married? This is a test. Four years. Four in December. Okay. Eight. See? Yeah. I pray Four years on December right. She's at home like right now going, <laughs> that, that better be right. She can watch it. It better be right. That's what I said. Hope so, that's right. So over those four years, the two of you have been building this shared identity. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the longer that you that couples together and they build this shared identity, then a lot more stable their relationship tends to be. Mm -hmm. um, and so in, in later life, when we can have major physical crises, or mental crisis, financial crises. I mean, the stock market drops and people lose Ugh. their retirement funds, and Ugh. you know, and, and people that are hoping to retire at this age now they got to wait an extra ten. I mean, there's all kinds of things that can happen. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna get carpal. You want one more time? Knock it on wood yeah. because um, those things make me sweat. <laughs> yeah, you know, those couples have often faced similar crises, or not even similar. They've been through the refiner's fire, so to speak, already. Mm -hmm. They've been through maybe the death of a child. They've been through uh, unemployment. They've been through um, infidelity even or other relationship difficulties. And having survived that, there's already this sense of, hmm, the, the future is not as unknown to us. Mm -hmm. 
because we know if we can survive that, we can probably do this as well. Wow. Okay, so if you're a guy in your late 40s, something like that, woman in your late 40s, yeah. and, and you're noticing some physical changes, you know, you can't, you know, you, you can't go skiing much anymore, those kind of yeah. things. Uh, what do you do? I mean, how do you get started? I mean, and, and your wife is like saying, oh, man, we used to ski every weekend, and now mm -hmm. you're laid up half the half of the week with a bum knee. Yeah. Huh. What happens? What do you where What do you do? Well, I, Craig, I should point back to you. <laughs> right? Why? I send them Why? to you. Send them to me. That's right. Send them to me. I'll, uh, yeah. I'll, yeah. Send let's, them to Craig. Let's. let's, let's um, no, I think you're referring to a, a, a conversation we have. Yeah. 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 Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. So, being middle aged doesn't mean that you have to experience these significant declines in physical function. For the most part, even a little bit of exercise, especially weight-bearing joint kind of strengthening things, mm -hmm. um, a, a little, right? You work with your doctor. If you've got a bum knee, then, you know, you want to be careful. Um, but even a little bit has more effectiveness in increasing strength and stability, uh, balance, recovery time. So at any age, starting a routine, a, 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 a um, regiment, of exercise, of you know, proper nutrition, that will go a long way in and of itself. And then easing yourself back into regular activity, skiing, you know, every, uh, once a month to two times a month, and, yeah. and working up to that. Yeah. There, there's no reason. I, I know people in their 90s that are at snow base and skiing. Sure, sure, I've wow. seen them. Now, now, sometimes you know people have physical problems not by tr not because of their lifestyle not because they've done anything kind of reckless it just happens just just it, happens you wear out man well you know it, you know maybe genetics or it yeah. may just be dumb luck yeah or bad luck um you know or, and, and or then smart you, luck well <laughs> th th then you work with your physician but really the probably the the best advice i could give is you know, try to be flexible and find something similar that you can equally enjoy but maybe isn't quite as demanding physically that's really important for for middle-aged adults later uh, adults in later life as well that they maintain this sense of continuity in who they are that's great with having that flexibility but also you know being able to to maintain this sense of this is who I am, this is what I enjoy doing, this is how I organize my life and, and what uh, who I am, and so I can maybe not play this sport anymore at Thanksgiving flag football because I keep dislocating my shoulder, <laughs> but maybe I can coach you know my grandson's football team, or maybe you know I can still use my passions to you still get to out guide there me. and do it. Yeah, find meaning and purpose in life. Yeah. You guys probably want to know you probably want to know a whole lot more about this subject and if you do this phone number right here uh, will put you in touch with Mark again Mark Adams professor at Weber State a licensed family marriage and family therapist licensed yeah. marriage Thanks, and Craig. family therapist which is a great way to put it he's been our guest today me and Farrell we've been grilling him and there's more to come we're gonna keep talking to Mark because we've got other episodes we're gonna air but we want to thank you for joining Junction City today with Mark Adams LMFT PhD yeah. LMFT yeah and the whole world salad. I don't know what that means. Yeah, there you go. Something like that. We'll see you next well, time. <laughs> Farrell and I are going to talk off camera. <laughs> Hope you got a lot of time. <laughs>